I keep forgetting to turn off that music. Um, so I've just been thinking about these speculative, non-speculative bubbles throughout the break. Uh, I think I want to correct myself a little bit. So in this first case that I told you about when everyone is informed, so they trade because they are informed. I'm not even sure if I would call this a bubble, and it is a little bit different from Gloucester Milgram, in that everyone trades because they know V, but the market maker does not only think that they know V, but the market maker does not know how many of them are informed, so the market maker does not know the actual mu. So the market maker would underestimate the informativeness of the order, order flow. And what would happen is that the price would adjust too slowly, so we would have the opposite of a bubble. I guess we could have the bubble in the opposite direction. right? If uh, asset value is low, then everyone sells, but the price would still be high. You kind of can interpret that as a bubble. And another, um, on another point, in this example in the appendix, this is wrong. I'll need to fix this. This is an example of a speculative bubble, according to the definitions that I just gave you here. So I will fix that. Uh, also, yeah, they just speaking of the slides, I, I I finished the slides yesterday, but uh, and I compiled the slides and the handouts for you. And I just forgot to upload them. And I'm sorry. So I, I uploaded them uh, few, a couple of hours before the lecture this morning. But they are up there now. Okay. So a little more on herding. We have considered a model or a few of how herding and by analogy bubbles can arise due to informational concerns just stemming from pure not really adverse selection but informational asymmetries and failure of information aggregation there might be a couple of other uh, problems there might be a couple of other factors that lead to bubbles to to herding and one of them which is also relatively popular in the literature is uh, career concerns or reputation concerns and the very, 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 very simple tiny model that I want to give you here is um, suppose that just managers are deciding whether to invest, where to invest their clients' money. And so they get their private signals imperfectly informative about the true value of this or that investment. But each manager is now either smart or dumb. And the manager itself does not know that, but uh, there are models in which the manager can know that and would still try to blend in. And suppose that if both managers are smart, they observe the same signal. But if one or both of them are dumb, they observe independent signals. So if you are smart, you analyze the same information, you arrive to the same conclusions. Uh, but if you are not smart, then you just invest randomly and so these private signals are independent. Now these may or may not correlate more or less with uh, V, if smart or not smart, uh, we just ignore that. And suppose that manager maximizes not the expected profit from the investment, but manager maximizes the expected reputation. So manager wants to appear smart, manager wants to appear competent, because this is what brings them more business. And consider a situation in which manager 1 moves first, then manager 2 moves second. So if manager 1 invests, then manager 2 can deduce well that uh, the first guy got the good signal. And in that case, even if signal of the manager 2 is zero, which may mean that you know manager 1 was actually uh, dumb and manager 1 got the wrong signal. But if manager 2 follows his signal and does not invest, so chooses opposite to manager 1, then this fact that somebody is not smart is revealed. And so both managers would be equally at blame, would be equally likely to be uh, dumb, 
but the idea is that it would still hurt manager 2's reputation as well even if he is actually smart and he got the right signal and manager 1 got the wrong signal right so manager 2 would have an incentive to herd with manager 1 just to indicate that you know both of them are smart both of them are competent both of them are doing the right thing just to save reputation So even if the investment fails, people might think that both managers are smart. They just got, well, the analysis was not good enough. Or the analysis was, you know, good enough, but the information was not there. So nobody could have predicted uh, this failure that has happened. So these reputation concerns can lead to a lot of stuff like that. And uh, one other factor that I want to just mention in passing, I did not even have it in the slides, is um, contracting incentives. So once again, if you do not invest yourself, which, to, to repeat my point from the last lecture, you should probably not do, unless you are a professional investor. So if you're not controlling your funds yourself, but you hire a manager to control your funds on your behalf, to invest in your behalf, then some compensation scheme is in place for that manager and this compensation scheme can also promote herding for example if if um if the promotion scheme involves fund performance relative to the market so manager is rewarded if he outperforms the market and the manager is punished otherwise and if the manager is smart enough he knows that he cannot really systematically outperform the market or it's really really difficult so if he's risk averse he will just herd with the market to guarantee himself a safe payoff of zero so this will naturally also lead into herding right this manager would do the same thing that market does and if all managers are like that then everyone just echoes each other's actions and decisions so that can also lead to this kind of herding <coughs> so herding can arise to due to a lot of different factors but we mostly considered uh, the case in which private information cannot be easily aggregated and this is the factor that led to uh, herding now the price mechanism does alleviate this problem to some extent so recall our main herding result was obtained in the model in which prices were fixed while once we allow prices to actually adjust to investors trading behavior uh, then these prices might reflect the information more correctly but if if uncertainty is very very complicated if it's multi-layered uh, then herds may still occur so prices may fail at aggregating all the available information now just to make a brief point here um, momentum trading that i mentioned buying when trading upwards and selling when the asset is trending downwards is often assumed to be a kind of a behavioral strategy so not an optimal one but if you believe the models that we've seen today this momentum trading can be interpreted as a perfectly rational as an optimal strategy finally the survey that i mentioned big chindani and sharma also discuss the empirical estimation of herding models a little bit um, so some conclusions can be tested in the data but what they show is that you know there is not little there is not really much you can do there is not little really much you can estimate uh, but if you're interested have a look but we will move on to our second big model of the day this time it's not a class of models but just one model it'll be by abru and bruna maya from 2003 And it will also deal with failure to aggregate information, but it will, um, this one will also rely on higher order beliefs, just like Contra's model from last week. 
So it starts by setting up a straw man and beating it and says that in classical economics, bubbles are impossible because of the backwards induction argument. So if everyone knows that something is a bubble and that it will burst eventually, then people in the last period before the burst would like to sell, right? They would like to act before they lose all their investments in the, uh, in the asset. But their selling decision would in turn drop the price, meaning they would lead to pop the bubble, which leads people in the second to last period do the same. So then people in the second to last period would know that in the next period, the asset price will drop, so they today should sell the asset. And so on. So this reasoning unravels, which means that if everybody knows that everybody knows the bubble will pop at uh, some point in the future, nobody will um, try to ride this bubble. Nobody would try to buy the asset which is overpriced and nobody would try to sell the asset which is underpriced in the hopes of um, you know if you buy the asset that is overpriced today you assume that it will just um, the price would continue to grow for at least some time so you can sell it later so you can uh, enjoy the bubble while it lasts so this standard reasoning supposes this is not the case but this kind of argument relies on common knowledge so it relies on everyone knowing when the bubble will pop, when to start this backwards induction argument, on everyone knowing what this last period is, which is, of course, not exactly the case in the real world. But the idea is you can relax that argument a little bit so that if everyone even agrees approximately on the distribution of these popping times, so to say, then the backwards induction argument would still work, so bubble would not be possible. So you must have some kind of fundamental disagreement, or not must, but if you have some fundamental disagreement in the economy about when the bubble will um, collapse, then it is possible to generate a bubble. And this is exactly what's happening in this model. So they set up a model in which this kind of coordination is needed to cause a crash, but agents do not agree on when they should sell the asset, on when they should coordinate on sale. So the crash never really follows. Or I guess my wording here might not be perfect. It should say a model in which coordination is needed to cause a price adjustment to bring price back to the fundamental value of the asset. So that's the way it should be worded. But the idea is that this coordination depends on beliefs about others. So I... How would I go with it? I want to know what you think about the about when the bubble will collapse because this information is relevant for me because this reflect this affects when it is optimal to coordinate on selling the, the asset or maybe I want to outplay you actually so in the end these higher order beliefs actually matter right I want to write the bubble if I believe that the bubble will persist, but the bubble will persist if other traders will not sell, will not sell, will keep buying. Right, so it matters here what I think about what other, what other traders will do. This is the idea. This is why higher order beliefs matter in this model. So let us set up a little bit more precisely. Once again, we will not analyze it rigorously, uh, but we will introduce some minimal setup. So the value of the asset at time t is given by vt and it is known that vt has been growing at rate g uh, from some point onwards so everyone agrees on some initial point 
let's say at time zero vt was one and this is common knowledge and everyone knows that since then this vt has been growing at rate g but at some random time t0 there is a slowdown and growth rate of this fundamental value vt slows down so starting from t0 the growth slows down to rate r which is less than g but the price however continues to grow at rate g so in this model we once again take price as semi-exogenous so the price follows this exogenous process until it is forced to adjust but we do not model explicitly why does the price grow at rate g uh, you can assume that this price reflects uh, kind of well yeah it reflects market belief about the valuation vt but as we'll see there is no common knowledge of what this vt is there is no agreement on what exactly this vt should be so but price is assumed to grow at rate g until one of the two happens so if time tau bar passes ever since uh, the slowdown occurred so at time t bar after the beginning of the slowdown the price is just exogenously adjusted it is exogenously brought down to the new vt and that's it but it can also collapse endogenously so in this model we will have both rational traders and behavioral traders and i will talk a little more about them in the next slide but if fraction kappa of rational traders decide to sell the asset then we say that uh, the price adjustment is also triggered so this is the other event that can trigger the price adjustment if enough of these rational sophisticated traders decide to sell now the thing here is that nobody really knows what this t0 was so no alarm is run when the slowdown occurs but the rational traders do gradually become informed <coughs> so we will say that uh, the distribution of the times at which they become informed is uniform between t0 and t0 plus some eta what this means is that each period there is some fraction of rational traders that become aware of the mispricing so they get a call from a hidden number which says this is, this asset is mispriced and you should sell at some point in the future so once this happens rational traders do know that the asset is overpriced but they can still decide to write the bubble right they do not necessarily know that other traders know that the asset is mispriced so they do not really know how quickly they were informed where in the time interval they are are they the first to be informed at t0 or are they the last to receive this call at t0 plus eta so they don't know how many others knew of the mispricing before them which would feed into their uh, decision on how long to write the the bubble how long to try to exploit it and in particular how much left they have before the exogenous correction this will be another piece of information that is uncertain for them now i am not 100 percent certain what the authors were trying to bring uh to describe by this exogenous correction tau bar because this is an important part of the model a lot of it relies on this tau bar existing on this exogenous correction happening at some point i do not believe that they dis uh, describe it in discuss it in great detail in the paper itself either so it, it remains a bit of a mystery but 
you, you probably can think of some uh, interpretations. Like just at some point the mispricing becomes so salient that um, the government intervenes. Or, or Elon Musk tweets about it. Tweets about Tesla stock being overpriced. Something like that. So some exogenous event which necessarily happens after time T-bar. So let's talk about more about traders. As I said, we have two groups. We have behavioral traders and we have rational traders. I've kind of told you what rational traders do and how they know things. What behavioral traders think is that they think this progress will last forever. So not only are they never informed about the slowdown, but they are just not aware of the slowdown whatsoever. They think that G will persist forever. This may sound like a familiar story. A lot of people thought that Bitcoin would grow forever. Or for the very uh, distant, for the very long foreseeable future. So the idea is these behavioral traders are willing, uh, sorry, they value the asset under the assumption that VT grows at rate G and will continue to do so. Meaning they, behavioral traders overvalue the asset. And whenever rational traders are willing to sell at a price just slightly below this, this, um, this overpriced value, Behavioral traders are the ones who are willing to buy. So they are willing to buy, sorry, at this price that grows at rate G. I forgot for a second that our price is uh, exogenous. Once again, behavioral traders value the asset at exactly this price, which grows at rate G, meaning that when, whenever any rational traders want to sell the asset, behavioral traders are willing to buy. Now, we assume that there is some limited number of these behavioral traders. That all traders split into behavioral and rational, and so there is only a limited number of behavioral traders. And in particular, we assume that there are that the number of them is such as to be able to absorb to absorb the supply from rational traders when exactly kappa traders are willing to sell. I guess this was a bit of a mouthful. So let us just quickly list it here. Uh, let's say there are x rational traders, 1 minus x behavioral traders, and let's just say for simplicity that everyone buys or sells one unit of the asset. So everyone buys or sells one asset, one unit of the asset, always behavioral traders are always willing to buy and rational traders are uh, on the sell side of the market so they are the ones selling. So what we want to mean, what we want to say is that the total demand from behavioral traders, so 1 minus x, if all of them are willing to buy their total demand is 1 minus x, is equal to x times kappa. So this total demand of behavioral traders can absorb share kappa of the total supply of rational traders. That's the idea here. <clears throat> so, going back to rational traders, they do receive the news that um, this high price growth is, is temporary. They do not really know when it stopped. So they are informed if it stopped, but they do not, once again, know how soon after the actual slowdown they were informed. And this in particular means that they are not sure what other people believe.
So suppose that you get the news at some time t prime. Actually, my question to you, where do you think you are in the queue, just in this model? So you received the news. Do you think that you are the first one to receive the news? Do you think that you are the last one to receive the news? How should you think about it? Once again, when you receive the news of the slowdown, you learn that the process has stopped. Do you think that you are in the beginning of the queue? You are the first to be informed? Or do you think that you are among the last to be informed? Or what should you think? I believe I gave you enough information to answer this. one of the latter to be informed. No, I, I cannot count that, I cannot, I cannot justify that. So, the distribution of informedness times is uniform, right? So, I don't want to go to the graph in the slides, but I can grow, draw my own graph, right? So what this means is, when no. Yeah. When time t0 happened, if you draw the PDF, the distribution function, probability density function of the informedness time, times of rational traders, it will be uniform distribution on this interval. So when you are informed, you realize that you are equally likely to be at every point in this distribution just from the uniform uh, assumption and on average you expect to be exactly in the middle but once again you realize that you're equally likely to be at any point out of these okay yes but thing is, so you do not know where you are, meaning you do not know when everyone else learned about the news. So, sorry for jumping around, uh, but I'll just do this. So suppose that you are actually one of the latter ones informed, so you are here. What do you think about the distribution of when other traders receive the, their news so you know that you might as well be the last one so other traders could be informed i'll draw it this way it doesn't really matter uh, could be informed as early as this time t prime minus eta But then there is also a chance that you might be one of the first ones to receive the news. So then you know that other traders will not be informed until T prime plus eta. So you know that the asset is mispriced, but you are not sure that other traders know, other rational traders know that the asset is mispriced. So you are not sure that the other traders will sell or or when will they do it similarly you realize that other traders will sell just before they think that uh, 
everyone else will sell. So it's important what you think about what they think, what everyone else thinks about the uh, T0. So you have some information about T0. You know it's between T prime minus eta and T prime. You do not know what everyone else thinks about T prime. You do not know what everyone else knows about what everyone else thinks about T prime and so on. So every time you go up a layer of reasoning in this logic, this interval of times that you consider that would be possible on that level widens. Meaning that there is no common knowledge of mispricing. It is never the case that all traders know that all traders know that all traders know and so on that the asset is mispriced, which is when they should sell the asset. Now the thing to point out here is if I think that everyone sells, it is optimal for me to sell as well, right? Because the demand from behavioral traders cannot accommodate all of us, all of us rational traders. So some of us will have to lose. So we are competing with each other. So I want to sell just before everyone else sells. But at the same time, I do want to delay my sale because the price grows. The later I sell, the higher is the profit I get. So this is the trade-off that I'm facing. I want to sell as late as possible, but with minimal uh, non-execution risk. I want to sell as late as possible, but before the bubble collapses. So this is the picture of a model from the paper. Here the price grows uh, at rate G, but starting from some T0, the fundamental value of the asset starts growing at a slower rate. And this small uh, rectangle down here is the PDF that I just drew to you. So this is the distribution of informedness times um, of awareness. So starting from T0 until T0 plus eta, traders become uniformly become informed. And of note here is time T0 plus eta k here. And this is the time when kappa informed traders, kappa rational traders are aware of the bubble. So just enough to collapse the bubble if all of them decided to sell, if all of them did the right thing. So this is the time that will be a little important later. And uh, once again to remind, there will be time T0 plus tau bar, at which the bubble will collapse exogenously. And everyone has a, um, again, a better impression of where this time is, because everyone knows approximately where T0 is. But I do not know what you think about T0 plus tau bar. I do not know what you think, what I think about T0 plus tau bar and so on. So this is the part that breaks the backward induction. Now one note here is that this graph is taken directly from the paper and there is a mistake in this graph. Can you spot the mistake in this graph? What is incorrect in this graph? Again, based on the things that I've told you. No guesses, no options. It's really simple and silly. These two lines should grow from the same point. So the fundamental value at time t0 does coincide with the price. It's just afterwards it starts growing at a slower rate. So I think they just screwed up a little with putting this curve 
downwards as if it started diverging at zero. Okay. So I guess I spoke through this uh, enough times. Why bubbles can arise here? So at least kappa traders must sell to burst the bubble. So there should be some degree of coordination. But all traders, um, it's hard to coordinate without knowing what others know and what others think. And what others think what, about what others think and so on. So mispricing can endure for quite a long time. And even though, it's not even if, but even though the traders realize that the market will crash at some point, that this tau bar exists, the tau bar is imminent, price adjustment will happen at some point. Traders do not know exactly when this will happen, and they do not know what others think about when this will happen. So they hope that maybe others have, le um, have worse information than this given trader. Meaning that if I can beat everyone else, if everyone else will not sell because they think the tau bar will be later than I think tau bar will be. That's the general idea. Okay, so how do we define a bubble here? Now, we can be pedantic or we can be not too picky. So if we just go back to the graph here, you see, I guess I should have left this line here. So you see that the price starts diverging from the fundamental value at time t0. So you can claim that there is a bubble in the market starting from t0. But, you know, it, it is true that the price does not reflect the fundamentals, but nobody knows that the price does not reflect the fundamentals. So market valuation is still kind of... Um, uh, kind of correct, according to the information of most of its participants. And even if some traders here start selling, so traders start selling as soon as they're aware, the price will still be uh, growing at rate G, because there will not be enough. So what we will say is we'll say there is a bubble if mispricing persists after time t0 plus eta kappa. So if after enough traders are aware of the bubble to burst it, after enough traders are aware of the mispricing to correct it, if the mispricing still persists after that time, then we'll call it a bubble. And we'll see that even with this weaker definition, more, more permitting, more forgiving definition of a bubble. We will still obtain a bubble. So, we'll say that the bubble is in the market not only if the asset is uh, mispriced, but the mispricing is well known to the trader, so there is enough private information dispersed in the market. Okay. Now there are a few statements that are really useful in the analysis, that are derived in the paper, that we will definitely not derive here. Firstly, uh, they, they show that traders take either the maximum long or maximum short position. So there are presumed to be some limits on position sizes. Uh, the way I want you to think about it is traders can hold zero or one units of the asset. All the rational traders, let me actually write it. Um, all traders can hold zero or one units of the asset. All rational traders begin with one unit in their stock, and all behavioral traders begin with uh, zero units. So that's the simplest, uh, the simplest toy interpretation. Um, but they do a slightly more serious model, so they, uh, their full model is, is allowing for other long and short positions and for 
other initial positions. Another thing they show is when a trader goes short, so basically when the rational seller sells the asset, it means that all other traders who learned about the mispricing before this dude will have already gone short. So this is to say that reaction times are monotone. The sooner I learn about the mispricing, the sooner I trade. Just to rule out some ridiculous scenarios. I have been thinking for a second about whether you can actually have uh, ridiculous equilibria here, and I have not arrived to a good conclusion. So, obviously, they derived the statement, but it might rely on some assumptions which, which we can break. Uh, but yeah, so assume that the sooner you learn of the mispricing, the sooner you trade. And finally, once you do trade, once the rational seller sells, he never re enters the market, so he never buys again. He just waits for the bubble to burst. And I hope that all of these are just reasonable enough. So we do not need to drive them rigorously. Uh, they just made intuitive sense without even further explanations. So there are two types of equilibria in this model. And they are called exogenous crash, crash and endogenous crash. And we've already defined what both of these mean. Exogenous crash means that uh, we hit tau bar, so that the condition of exogenous crash is fulfilled. And endogenous crash means that price adjustment is triggered by enough of the rational traders selling the asset. So let's talk about the first one, about the exogenous crash first. And it happens when uh, the growth rate G, the initial growth rate G is high, dispersion eta is high, and the absorption capacity is high. Basically, all of these mean that there is a lot of profit to ride in the bubble and the risk is relatively low. So high G means that the price is growing really quickly so there is a lot of profit of just delaying your trade by a little bit eta means that there is lower risk that somebody will trade before you and somebody will pop the bubble and then the absorption capacity kappa uh, high means that many many informed traders must trade before the bubble collapses so the market is quite deep and so it's a bit hard to pop the bubble which means that the bubble will, will survive for a longer time so there is lower risk that it will collapse in any given period of time now just going back to um, this picture probably let me erase all of that red stuff so once once again, once you learn about the mispricing, you realize that T0 has some uniformly distributed backwards from the time you're informed. So you know you, you're as likely informed, you're as likely to be the first to be informed as you are to be the last one to be informed. But on average, you are in the middle. Which means that on average, you will be the median seller. To be to be selling the asset all right you're equally likely to be anywhere in the queue and one of the results that uh, we stated but did not prove is that well if you are the first to receive the news you are the first to also trade if you are the last to receive the news you are the last to trade so you want to be among the first kappa traders to trade, to sell. So suppose that kappa is high, just from zero. So the market collapses when the first 
uh, trader cells to one the market collapses only if all the sellers sell you want to so if you are in the first kappa traders to learn of the mispricing then you manage to sell first and you are fine if you are among the last ones what should i use horrible color if you are among the last ones then you will not be uh, selling in time because the bubble will burst before you so the idea is you want to be as close to this point as possible you want to be as uh, close to being the last trader who sold before the bubble burst as possible so you want to delay but you want to trade before kappa so if you think that you are on average in the middle and if you know that kappa is large then you know that you are relatively safe here in the middle which means that you want to delay your trade by a little bit and of course this reasoning will be uh, will apply in equilibrium which means that all traders will be willing to delay their sale for a little bit so all of them will be selling very slowly and vice versa for example if if kappa is very small you know that you are on average in the middle and you know that by the time you trade it is more likely than not that bubble will have already burst so you want to rush your trade i guess it was green was it you want to rush your trade and to preempt all of the other traders who uh, try to burst the bubble so when kappa is small you have the incentives to sell fast when kappa is large you have the incentives to uh, delay your sale this is one um, parameter here you can do the same reasoning for ATAs and for G's. G's is among the more intuitive. So as a result, when these conditions hold, when both G, ATA and Kappa are high, traders will be selling very slowly. And as a result, not enough traders will sell before this exogenous deadline. So traders will never trigger the price adjustment, but rather this exogenous price adjustment will also happen. And vice versa. When all of these parameters are low, or any of them are low enough, uh, traders have incentives to sell quick, and all of them will be trading quick, and which means that enough traders will sell to make the bubble burst. So some bubble incentives, of course, remain. But uh, they are outweighed by the risk of of um, missing out okay uh, one last thing that i want to talk about here is uh, coordination so this is a coordination game and like in any coordination game people can coordinate on any given on any random event so why is this a coordination game traders want to trade around the same time so they want to trade around the same time but just before it and here this time is the time that the bubble bursts and all sellers want to trade at this time minus epsilon so at the last time that the bubble persists meaning that if the all traders in the world coordinate on some time they can coordinate on selling after another elon musk tweet just to remember him twice in one lecture then you know that if this happens you also have the incentives to coordinate on the very same event because you do not want to miss out uh, until after everyone else has sold but you also do not want to rush because you know that um, you know that the bubble will not burst until musk tweets Okay, so this gives rise to the sunspot equilibria. In particular, any random event can serve as a coordination device. So some uninformative event is observed with certain probability. And uh, so this kind of coordination can happen that I just described. And the authors give some examples. 
that such sunspots did actually arise. So in 1980s, uh, they say the trade data had big market impact in the US. Once again, I'm not 100% clear on what they mean by trade data. So were these government reports on internal external trade? Or is this just a fancy word for earnings reports? In 1990s, uh, statements from Alan Greenspan, the head of the Federal Reserve, were more influential. So everyone coordinated around these statements. So these sunspots are a thing, and uh, coordination can be pretty, pretty random. So to conclude, uh, with uh, Brunemeyer, standard arguments rely on a lot of common knowledge between agents, and in many economic models we do have common agents, common knowledge uh, between agents, so that what I think about others is exactly what others think that I think about others. So all of these higher order beliefs just collapse uh, downwards. But in a few models where we tinker with this common knowledge and throw it away and set up the, a model in such a way that um, higher order uncertainty persists, this kind of uncertainty about higher order beliefs can cause a lot of um, cool results. So we saw it last lecture, we saw it this lecture. If you have ever seen uh, global games, then it deals with the exact same, same idea. There is no common knowledge in those models, and that is what drives the results. And global games uh, are frequently applied to uh, government revolutions, for example. But more relevantly for our course, global games are often applied to bank runs, for example. So everyone wants to keep their money in the bank if there is no, no bank run, but if uh, there is a bank run and everyone will try to take their money out of the bank, so the bank will go bankrupt, so I will uh, lose all of my money in the bank, then I also want to join the run. So this is also a coordination game, and it has all the same issues if everyone receives some kind of private signal about the fundamentals of the bank. Now these days bank runs do not apply to to uh, private deposits, because all deposits are insured by the government, but uh, there are similar runs on a larger scale, so they, there can be similar currency attacks, uh, that's a popular one recently, there can be attacks on the... Uh, I'm not even sure what other examples I can give you. So yeah, let's stick with currency attacks. So, in retrospect, maybe global games is uh, one of the things that we should have considered in this course, and maybe I'll do that next year. But we will not do it this year. So, this point marks the end of the mandatory part of the course. We have two lectures left, and I will spend at least, at least a half of the final lecture just doing a review of everything we've done. We've done a small review when we were talking about digital markets. So this will um, also probably not take that much time. So that will be on the last lecture. But next week, I think we will be talking about auction models. Because I think they are quite uh, well ap applicable to financial markets. And they deal with a, a number of agents, a few agents, traders, trying to bid for the asset, when all of them have imperfect information about this asset. So I presume that you did not see auction models before. Uh, let me know in chat if you have, if I'm wrong about this. And in this case, this will be quite an entertainment. Now, I'm saying this is extracurricular because it was not included in the syllabus. So I, I think I even cannot ask you about this on the exam. But I will not ask you about this on the exam either way. So I will not ask you about auction models. But I hope this will still be a fun enjoyable pastime, and you will get to learn a lot of new stuff. But with that, we are done for today. Thank you for hanging around. I will see you next week when we talk about auctions. <laughs>